Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah chapter 63. Second John is the second is the 63rd book of the Bible. Who is this that cometh from Eden? Good question. Who, who's coming from Eden? With dyed garments of Basra. That this is glorious in his apparel. This that is glorious in his apparel, travailing in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. That's God. Wherefore art thou red in thy apparel? Well, something about his clothing is red. And thy garments like him that treadeth the winepress. I have trodden the winepress alone. And of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger. And trample them in my fury. Somebody's angry. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my raiment, his clothing. For the day of vengeance is at my heart. The year of my redeem is, is come. I looked, and behold, there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. For my own arm brought salvation unto me. My fury... It upheld me. I will tread down the people in my anger. I will make drunk of my fury. I will bring down their strength to the earth. Revelation. Sounds mighty angry one. I wonder who this angry one can be. In the world, they wouldn't guess who this who this character is. Revelation chapter 14, verse 19. And the angel thrust in the sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth. You read about this in Matthew. And cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. Okay, that's correct. God. And the winepress was trotted without the city, Jerusalem. He's not in Jerusalem. Like where Jesus Christ was. Jesus Christ did not die in Jerusalem. The blood came out of the winepress. Even unto the horse's bridles. By the space of a thousand six hundred furlongs. Okay, we got God outside of Jerusalem. Revelation chapter 19. Verse 11. And I saw heaven open. Ooh, that sounds good. And beheld a white horse. He that sat upon him, the horse, is called Faithful, capital F, and True, capital T. And in righteous does he judge and make war. Uh-oh. His eyes were as a flame of fire. It sounds like the angry guy in, in Isaiah. His head with many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. There's Isaiah. And his name is called the Word of God. That's Jesus Christ. 
1 John 5 and John chapter 1. Who is God in the previous chapter, Revelation 14? Again, take the Jehovah Witnesses and throw them out the window. And the armies which were in heaven followed him on white horses. So Isaiah says he's trampled and alone. No one is with him. Why? Because we're behind Jesus. When we finally catch up where Jesus is, the destruction's already done. We're not riding with Jesus. We're riding behind Jesus. And he's doing all the judgment before his hand. We're not doing nothing. We're just coming back. Armies, that's the Christian. Follow him upon horses, clothed in fine linen and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. We know that's the word of God, Hebrews. And with it should smite the nations, goats, Matthew, and shall rule them with a rod of iron, out, and tread the winepress, there it is, of the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty God, there it is. He has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of King and Lord of Lords. There it is. Look at Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. And shall make war with the Lamb, capital L. That's the Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world. And the Lamb, capital L, shall overcome them. And he is Lord of lords and King of kings. There it is. There's no doubt who we're looking at in Isaiah. I'm going to make a bold statement in a moment, but let me check one more reference. Uh, let's see. Let me check this reference before we go there. i got so many references in my Bible. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25, 15. I don't think we're going to finish this chapter tonight. Jeremiah 25, 15. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel. <clears throat> you better have the God of Israel. Take the wine cup of fury at my hand and cause the nations to whom I send it thee to drink. And you read all the way down to verse 38. All the nations, we're not going to read the whole chapter. We'll come to it, Lord willing. Well, that's the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're reading about in Isaiah chapter 63. And it's sad that <clears throat> I find Christians don't read the Old Testament. I read the book of Revelation. Well, Revelation is written of many parts of all the 65 books of the other parts of the Bible. Without the 65 other books of the Bible, you really wouldn't have an understanding of the book of Revelation. Daniel and the book of Revelation go hand in hand. Have you not seen in Isaiah, and as we go closer into Jeremiah, we're going to see the current conditions of the world, and we'll see that in Jeremiah. And then Judah gets the axe. Come in the day, there's going to get the axe. And the Bible calls it the battle axe. The Antichrist, I believe that's Sennacherib who's a type of Antichrist. But we don't study the Old Testament. And when we do, we go through it, you know, racing through a, a race like, you know, it's one of these stock car races. Okay, we did another chapter. See you next week for the next chapter. And you don't get fed. 
So that whole thing is about Jesus Christ in the second advent, and we ran to references. <coughs> Pardon me. I run the references so you see the truth. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord after reading verses 1 through 6. Do you read verses 1 through There is death and slaughter and judgment and, and, and just conquering and blood and Jesus Christ stepping on his enemies. And the blood is coming out on his horse and upon him and his clothes. I will speak of my loving kindness of the Lord. What is that? He's prancing upon. He's defeating. He's winning. He's got his vengeance on all those that curse Israel. And the loving kindness is, I'll protect you, Israel. I'll defend you, Israel. We'll get the battle done, Israel. Israel will be on top. But then again, you know, if you're a Jehovah Witt, thou shalt not kill. What do you describe in verses 1 through 6? That's Jesus Christ himself killing the enemies of the Jews. We know the sheep nations go in, scripture with scripture. Again, it's about Israel. Just watch, read. According to all that the Lord has bestowed upon us, and the great goodness towards, there it is, the house of Israel. Jesus is going to do what Joshua did, but completely and rightly. Now, Joshua brought them into the promised land, but they did not weed out all the weeds. And then you got the book of Judges and Samuels and Kings and Chronicles, and they're just messing up. Here we are in Isaiah. We're going to have the Queen of Heaven and Jeremiah, because Joshua and the children of Israel did not weed out the weeds, Here's Jesus, verse 1 through 6, pulling those weeds out. He's getting rid of all the oppression, all the enemies, all the religions. All that is against God. Jesus Christ is ripping them out, getting rid of sending them into hell. And God comes along when we pick up Israel, Israel, Peter, wherever they are, we bring them to the promised land, and God plants them in that land, and there's no wheat. No curse. I mean, Joshua was a good man, but he did not fulfill all that Jesus told him to do. There was enemies that came to Joshua one time. And they had, you know, they made their clothes old. They made their shoes old. And they got moldy bread. And Joshua did not ask counsel with God. You know, another thing is lacking and it lacks in my life. When you read Bible characters, many of the errors they make is because they don't ask God. Peter, not so, Lord, don't, you're not going to wash my feet. Why didn't he just say, Jesus, why are you doing this? You see Elijah, and, he, and, he, and he's in turmoil, and, and the queen's threatening his wife. He doesn't turn to God, he just runs away. You think Noah should ask God, okay, what's the danger to me planting his vineyard? And God is not going to answer your question that you don't ask. So it's all about Israel again, Israel. Which are being bombed today. And the media is going against Israel. And oh, be careful. And the President Biden is talking to Israel about cease firing. Uh, Israel didn't start it. Roman Catholic. Go to, go knock on head. Uh, oh, man, I forget their name now. Who cares about their name? They're a curse to God. Hamas. Go knocking on Hamas's door. They're the ones that started it. Be careful. The nation of America is already cursing Israel. Stop it, Israel. It ain't their fault. 
The media, oh, look what Israel's done. No, Israel, didn't, they're just defending themselves. Which has bestowed on them according to his mercy. According to the multitude of his loving kindness to the nation of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. At one point, God told Moses, listen, I'll just wipe them all out. And Moses stepped in like Jesus, the intermediary between God and the nation of Israel. For he said, God, surely they are a people, surely they are thy, my people. That's a big difference. Sorry, let me let my go. That's a big difference. America claims to be a Christian nation. No, she's not. God speaking about Israel, they're my people. And there are people who say, God's all done with Israel. Children that will not, children that will not lie. <laughs> Is that today? <laughs> Read your Bible and say, is that today? <laughs> Was that yesterday? <laughs> so he was their savior. Is that today? <laughs> no, he's their savior after he comes to the second advent. When was Rahab saved? When Joshua sent the spies and go get her. She could have died at any moment before Israel came in. The king could have found out and had her executed. And they could, the spies could have came in and went into that apartment and said, well, where is she? Well, they found out about you. And they executed her and the whole family. There had been no salvation. She would have been in hell. There was no salvation to Joshua. Jesus. Don't you mess with your King James Bible. When it says Jesus brought them in. Because it's going to happen. In all their afflictions, he was. <coughs> again, excuse me. Afflicted. And the angel. Now this is. We're going now into the history of, of Israel. History is being rewritten today. History is being changed. Because one group of people don't like it. And there are a group of people that the Bible says they're to be servants of servants. Servants of Japheth, the servants of Ham, and the servants of uh, uh, Shem. Like it or not. That's why a lot of their churches don't have the Bible. They got a political card. Because the political card will protect them. The Bible talks about servants and can't have that. The angel of his presence saved them. And throughout the time, Moses, God told Moses, I'm going to send my angel. The moment they sinned the sin, I believe it was the calf. God says, all right, you know, all right, I'm going to send an angel. In his love, and in his pity, he redeemed them. How did he redeem them? That lamb, when they came out, the Passover night, through the blood of the lamb. Not the lamb of God yet, but the lamb, the Passover lamb. And he bared them. He put up with them. <laughs> Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And carried them all the days of old. Their entire history. This is the story of Israel. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. And they did. And the Bible and Paul records for unbelief. Therefore he was turned to them their enemy multiple times. And he fought against them. Multiple times. They're, he's fighting against Israel today. Because they fought the Holy Spirit. And say we don't want Jesus. We'll have. We'll, have, uh, 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 we'll take Caesar. His blood be upon us. And our children. 
So that was a very bold statement. As much as the last bold statement Israel made, whatever God says we will do. Remember that in Exodus 18 and 19? Really? You weren't told what the law is and you said we will do what the law says. Have they been doing what the law says? They lied. Right? Well, how can we just read a passage here? Shall they lie? That's got to be future. You know, I read in my Bible last night before I went to bed. In the place where God will name his name three times a year, the male shall go. They're not doing that today. They're not going to Jerusalem for the Passover. They're not bringing their offerings. They're not burning upon the brazen altar. Yet, everything God said we will do. Really? You're lying. After Jesus comes, after God plants them, there won't be no more lies. Not yet. Pretty soon. Then he, re he remembered the days of old Moses. There he is. And his people, Israel, saying, Where is he that brought them out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? That's Moses. And led them by the right hand of Moses. Wait a minute. Hold on. He remembered the days of old Moses. And his people Israel. When he God that brought them out of the sea. God brought them out of that sea. And the shepherd of his flock. Where is he? God that put his God's Holy Spirit within him. That led them by the right hand of Moses. That's not Moses. That's the angel. And who is that angel? That angel is the same one as the rock. And who did Paul say that rock was? Jesus. I, I, I don't see Jesus in the Old Testament. Man, you got your eyes blind. When Jesus walked up to that Samaria woman, the half Jew, half Gentile, I'm the water of life. Uh, what other water was there to reference to? And that half breed Jew, guess what she said? We're looking for the Messiah. Jesus said, I am the Messiah. Well, wait a minute. Let me go tell everybody in my hometown. The Jews didn't do that. Now let me just ask you a question. You just smile. Did she ask those people in the village to come to church or did she bring them to Jesus? Another question. Didn't we just read about the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ? So... As the Old Testament saints looked forward to Calvary, they would be looking forward to the, the second coming of Jesus Christ, correct? Right? Yeah? How come Revelation 19 says he has a name that no man knoweth? We just read the second advent, didn't we? And there's more about the second advent than there's about Calvary. So they should be looking forward to the second advent. They're not looking forward to the second advent. Just as much as they're looking forward to the Calvary. Again, they're looking for Calvary. When Jesus dies on Calvary, there's only one disciple there. Everybody else is gone. Even the women didn't know Three days later, they're bringing spices for a dead body. Oh, yeah, they're really looking. You're going into the Bible with your eyes poked out. You're not even wearing blinded. You just... You, your eyeballs. You're rolling your eyes across the floor and not in the pages of the Bible. I wanted to say that earlier. I forgot and I got a chance to. Watch this. Watch this. Let them by the right hand of Moses, glorious arm, dividing the warriors before them to make himself an everlasting name. 
There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. What is that name? At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. It's Jesus. So when Jesus is tr transformed on the mountain, do you think Moses was a complete stranger to who Jesus was? No. Moses knew exactly. Moses was in heaven with God the Father and God Jesus Christ. And that rock was Christ that followed him. That manna, Jesus said, John 6, he's the bread of life. It's a shame that I don't read the Old Testament. That's a shame. You know, there's more books of the Old Testament than there are New Testament. And you know, majority of New Testament books are really primarily written to Hebrews. How many books did Paul write? Was it 12? I think. All right. That led them through the deep as a horse in the wilderness. As a horse? What's that reference? Isn't Jesus going to be coming on a horse through the wilderness one day for Israel again? Literally? That they should not stumble. They stumbled all along the wilderness. No food, no water, earth opens up, fire, the fiery serpents. Oh, there's giants in the land, we can't go in. But there's coming a time they won't stumble under Jesus who's on horseback. With the church behind them. Israel is going to redo their route from Egypt to the promised land. None under Moses, none under Joshua, though they will be there under Jesus Christ. Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, all that is going to happen again. And many Christians are going to be on the horses and they're going to be, hmm? Well, this is something new. No, it's not. I want to have a Christian get to heaven, absent from the body and presence of the Lord, and freak out the moment they see Satan in heaven. I want to have many Christians get upset when they get to heaven and they find out that Fluffy and, and Kitty and all of them are not in heaven anymore. Or never were. That there's a possibility that there are family members. There are family members in heaven that won't be there. But my preacher, my church. Yeah. Uh-huh. As a beast goeth down into the valley. I better be an ass. The Spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. So what do you read about Hebrews? There's a rest, 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 rest. Written to Hebrews. So thou lead thy people, Israel. Israel. Not Americans. Not the church. To make thyself a glorious name. Wait to the millennium. Now that was to be the object of Israel when they got into the promised land, that golden city, but it failed. It won't fail under Jesus. Look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of thy holiness, heaven, glory, of thy glory, heaven, where thy zeal <clears throat> excuse me, and thy strength Back to verse 1. Travailing the greatness of thy strength. There's Jesus. Verse 1 to 6 is all about Jesus. Verse 6. Their strength. That strength is Jesus. The sounding of thy bowels and of thy mercies towards me. Are they restrained? Doubtless thou art our father. 
God the Father. What did Jesus keep saying? My father, your father, but your father is of the devil. You're not following God. So Abraham be ignorant of us. Abraham had no idea what, of their ch children and all that. So there are some things when people die, they are not made aware of. And Israel acknowledged does not. <laughs> Abraham didn't know about us. Israel didn't involve us. Thou Lord our Father. That's a bold statement. They can't claim that statement today. They're not. They are disobedient children. They are down in the pigsty, and pigs are unclean. You do know the parable of the sower is a Jewish story about a Jewish son. I know we use it for, for spiritualizing for a Christian, but it's Jewish. And that the father's waiting for the children to come back out of that pigsty. And that the religious people are getting all upset because oh, you took them back. Read the parable of, of the of the uh, of the uh, parable son and the missing coin and the missing uh, gem jewel. He just got done fighting with the Pharisees. It's about them. They get sick. They're the ninety nine. Jesus went after one. The sinner, he eats and drinks with sinners. A woman lost one coin. Go after that lost one rather than the, the, all the, the Pharisees and Sadducees. Jesus came to seek that which was lost. That man, he, he took his and went down and, and, and with, the, with the harlots, the whores, the sinners, the pigsty. And that one son sat out there angry and all upset. That was the Pharisee. Notice how the son is sitting outside the party. He's not in the party. He's in hell. Ugh. Well, friend, if you're in hell, you're with the, the prostitutes. And the... Rightly divide. Sometimes when we spiritualize and not teach these stories correctly, we do great damage O oh Lord why hast thou made us to err from thy way uh, you did it yourself don't blame there's that blaming God Adam what happened she did it Eve what happened the serpent Saul what's the problem here well you know my military guys David, what's it? Lord, it's me. I absolutely sinned against you. And and hardens our heart from thy fear. My eyes are getting blurry. I apologize. They're blaming God. You know, they kept blaming. You know, it's so funny. I, I, I'm going, I just went through numbers and all. I'm in Deuteronomy. It's so funny. The earth opens up, right? Swallows this one particular family and closes up without even a birth. And they have a nerve to go up to Moses there. You killed them. Like Moses opened the ground. No. Was it Moses? It wasn't Aaron. They didn't even have the nerve to blame God. Here they're blaming God. And there are people who blame God. Why did the children die? Because Eve disobeyed God. Well, that's not right. And you disobey God too. Not me. I never killed anybody. Yeah, uh, okay, you never killed anybody what about lying, cheating, thoughts of adultery. Uh, what about those other sins? I got people come up to me every once in a while, they'll say, and, and, and they're sodomites, they'll say, you know, what about gay and lesbian? I say, okay, let me be honest, it's an abomination, but wait, 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 before you get upset, 
let's get away from that sin of, of abomination. And let, let, let's look at something else. And I will take him. You were the most perfect child ever to be. No. Well, didn't the Bible say, honor thy father and mother? You have never, ever taken anything that's not your fault. Well, no. Doesn't the Bible say, thou shalt not steal? Let, 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 let's get off the big sin. Let's look at the little sin. Have you ever put your faith and trust in Jesus? No. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You see, they come up to me, they want me to they want me to blast their sin. Their big evil wicked. They know it's a big evil wicked sin. And yet they did that with Jesus. Woman, Jesus, we caught this woman in adultery. <laughs> we got him now. Return for thy return for thy servant's sake. What do you think that reference is to? That's going to be the prayer at the end of the seven years in the millennia. I mean, the, the tribulation period. Oh, Lord, return. Da, da, da. No, they're, they're not even expecting Jesus. I bet some idiots are going to be in the tribulation. You know, the Old Testament saints were looking forward to the second advent. I believe the devil's going to teach in, tri in the tribulation. Faith alone. I've had pastor tell me, well, there's no there's no law in the tribulation. Yes, there is. That's salvation. Law and faith in Jesus. And the devil is going to twist and say, faith alone, no works. He's got people saying today, faith and works. I'm a good person. The devil always twists it. And you got pulpits today already preparing the devil's way. If these people in church, the rapture, the rapture happens and they don't go, well, you know what I heard the pastor say? It's not law. You've got to be faith alone. <clears throat> got to be careful with the scriptures. You can't handle the scriptures. Get out of the pulpit. Because it ain't going to be your pants on fire. Well, maybe it will be your pants on fire. The people of thy holiness. Gee, guess who they are? And possessed it but a little while. <laughs> they weren't in that land too long. Our adversaries, who's got adversaries? Uh, Hamas. <laughs> have trotted down their, thy sanctuary. The Romans, the Babylonians, the Muslims, and soon the Antichrist. You know, it's funny, people call their church the temple of Jesus, the house of God. And then when the church is going, I guarantee the Antichrist is going to use your lovely church building with your pews, your steeple, and your lovely grass. He will be so happy to use your churches for his pleasure. Wouldn't it be funny in the tribulation period? All right, everybody sign up for the mark. Well, where would we go for the mark? Go down to the Baptist church. And to every Baptist church, you can receive the mark. Want to find a Baptist church? Just look in the yellow pages. The mark of the beast will be at the Baptist churches. You want the mass? You go to the Catholic church. You want to be? You go to this church. But if you want the mark, I got a whole bunch of Baptist buildings for you. They're pretty too. Ooh, I just, ah, I just heard a bunch of bastards. Got it in the rear end. Oh, it hurt. No, my sanctuary. I got, a church, I got in trouble one time in, in a church, in their sanctuary, because one of their cliques who like to chew gum spit their gum out everywhere where they felt like it. I stepped in one of their gumballs one time and stepped into that, and I got gum on their brand new carpet. Ooh, I got gum in the sanctuary. And I got a lecture about it. I told the guy, I said, why don't you just have a church split? He goes, what are you talking about? I said, why don't you get a brand new blue carpet? Half the people like it, and half the people won't like it. 
It's not a proper attitude. No? Why don't you go after the person that put the gumballs out there? No, no, no. no. I know. That was a rabbit trail. <laughs> He's gone. I just shot the Easter Bunny. Oh, sorry. We are thine. Who can say that? Israel. Thou never bearest rule over them. <laughs> That's a bold statement. They were not called by thy name. They will one day. You know how many times Israel and God's like, please, no. Solomon, okay, yeah, you, you, when you started married wife number 200, please. You know, there's some people come up to me, well, I'm a Christian. You know, I tell them, shut up, don't tell anybody. I told a couple of people, oh, I'm a Christian. I said, go in the closet and be a Christian. What are you talking about? Because your life is perverted. You are an excuse that I deal with people say, well, I know a bunch of Christians. Yeah, I know. I just told one the other day to go back in the closet. <laughs> you're going to be a worldly, carnal Christian. Just, just don't tell anybody you're a Christian. Be a secret Christian until you clean up your life and repent and get right. Ooh, that's bad to say. <laughs> 